This Shabbos, we read Parshas Tzav, and I want to share with you a, a, a short insight. It's very, very important on many different levels. There is, uh, last week's parasha dealt with the offerings that were brought by the community. Tzav focuses on specifically the responsibilities that Aaron and his sons, the Kohanim, had in the Beis Hamikdash itself. It's the first couple chapters of Tzav. The first carbon of the day is known as the carbon tamid. That is the carbon ola that was brought twice daily, once in the morning, once in the afternoon, and corresponds with our tefillah. We have shachris in the morning, we have mincha in the afternoon. Myriv actually is interesting because Myriv, the uh, sages tell us, corresponds to the Hector Chalovim Ve'evorim, meaning after a korban was, the, the, there was four essential avodas in the bringing of korban. They slaughtered it, they caught its blood in a container, they took the container over to the Mizbeach, it's a third avoda. And then they sprinkled its blood. That's really the, that, that's the essential. The sprinkling of blood was the essential atonement of the carbon. Then they would put, depending on the carbon, the entire animal on the Mizbeach. They would put part of the animal, part of it was consumed by the Kohanim, part of it was consumed by the Kohanim and the Israelim. That's what happened. The sprinkling of blood really was the essential. As almost an afterthought, the animal was then burnt on the Mizbeach. In the sprinkling of the blood, you already fulfill the obligation. Then they would put the animal on the Mizbeach. The parts that had to be burnt and consumed were burnt overnight. Myriv, says the Gemara, correlates to the burning of the limbs and the fatty pieces that were put on the Mizbeach at night. So, which also, therefore, the, represents, the Talmud actually says that, that there is a dispute in the Gemara whether Mayrav is even obligatory. There are, there's a position in the, in the Talmud that says that, that Tfilas Arvis Rishus, the davening Mayrav is really optional. Shachris and Mincha is Keva, obligatory. Mayrav is Rishus. There is an opinion that says, no, Mayrav is Chova. Actually, the Halacha is brought down from the Gemara is that it's Rishus, that it's optional. Our Rishonim and the Poskim right, have ruled that it's become an essential part of every Jew's davening to daven Myriv. So therefore, even though from the Gemara it would appear that it's only optional, but we've now taken upon ourselves that it is obligatory. Right? Just as a side point, which is fascinating, by the way, because the Talmud says... There are those that say that the korbanos are connected, the tefillos are connected to korbanos, which is shachras, mincha, and mayrib. And there are those that say that really, that tefillos, the tefillos were avos tiknum, they were established by our forefathers, by Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. And the Talmud continues to show this, it says, Avram, tikkun tefillos, shachris. Yamad Avram Beispalel brings a posuk that which shows Avram established the tefillah of Shachris. Mincha was Yitzchak, and Myre we see that when Avram when when Yaakov Avinu went back to Daven at the in the in the place of the, the Mikdash Makom Amishkas when he was on the way to uh, the house of Lavan, that's where Myre was established, like right by nightfall, close to nightfall. So I heard my Rashiva really a wonderful question. 
He says, we know the Bechir Shabbat Avos, the one who is considered the most complete of the forefathers, the one that did not have children that went astray. Right? I mean, the most complete of the Avos, the, the full package is Yaakov Avinu. Yaakov is, the, is Yisrael. He's the one Yisrael comes from. Avram still, there was, a, there was an Esav, Yitzchak had a Yishmoel. The complete package, till everything got out of the system, was Yaakov Avinu. Why should he be married? <laughs> if Tefillah is either connected the Avos or connected the Korbanos, Mayrev seems to be the least important. There's opinions you don't even have to dive in Mayrev. Mayrev is the burning of the, uh, the, the, the after the pieces, the leftover pieces is getting away. That's Mayrev. And that's Yaakov Avinu, the Bechir, the chosen of the Avos. Right? Interesting question. So he wanted to suggest that The notion of davening is that we are, we have a hotline. It's like we have, you, you press the buzzer and you're summoning God to a certain extent. I mean, it's an unbelievable thing. We are able to, three times a day, present ourselves, knock on the door. And uh, in fact, the way Rashi brings down Chumash, the reason why we do smichas ge'ula l'tfila you do the Shema and then you do the Shema Esra, is if you do it the other way around, it would be like ringing the doorbell and running away, knocking on the door and running away. You know, so you do Shema and then you go through. Right? So this idea, like we're presenting ourselves to Hashem. So it could be, the my Rosh want to say, is that the least important tefillah in that time period of night requires the greatest protectia. You have to have the greatest of the avos to be able to create that. And you call me at night, you can bo- you're bothering me at home, you're calling me at night, you need, you need the schus, you need the merits. The one that has to institute that is the most powerful of the avos is the one that has to create the mire, if not the, uh, not the least. And it's an interesting idea that he wanted to say. But I think what's fascinating is the first avoda of the day is not the bringing of the carbon. Okay. The first avoda of the day is known as the Truma Sadeshan. The Kohanim had to be chosen for different avodas. The first thing they chose for was the Truma Sadeshan. What's the Truma Sadeshan? Literally means the removal of the ashes. Okay. So the removal of the ashes really comprised of two different possible services. One was that every day, the ashes that had burnt and piled up on the Mizbeach from the night before, they would wake up, go to the mikveh, get ready. They actually had to put on big day kahuna. The Pasuk says that, um, the Kohen would put on his fitted linen tunic and he would put on his linen pants. And then he would go the Heirim Esadeshin Asher Tocha La'esh Esa'ola Al Mizbeach Basama Esa Mizbeach. He would then remove the ashes from the Mizbeach and put it to the side of the Mizbeach. What's called the Truma Sadeshin? Every day they moved some of the ashes over. Every once in a while the pile would become too high and there was the Hotza Sadeshin. They removed the ashes completely out of the camp. So it was the Truma Sadeshin, the Hotza Sadeshin. There's like two possible mitzvahs involving the ashes. So I thought it's very interesting though, that's the first avod of the day. And the Torah goes out of its way to say you have to wear your begodim for it. It's interesting that that would be something that we consider to be avodah. It is true that after he did that avodah, he's trained, changed into another set of clothes because generally when you did that avodah, mm-hmm. you would get dirty. Right? So they had another set of clothes. They would use an older pair, older set of garments for that avoda, and then they'd have the freshly pressed garments for the next avoda that they would do the avoda of the... Uh, but that's the first avoda of the yom. So I first, the first question was bothering me is, why make it the first avoda of the day? 
It could have been the last avoda of the evening. Before they went to sleep, they removed the ashes. Right? Yet they didn't. That was, that was the first, the first avoda of the new day was the removal of the ashes. So I saw a beautiful insight from Shamshan Fall Hirsch. Shamshan Fall Hirsch was a, uh, a, a, a rov that lived in Frankfurt in the uh, 18th century. And uh, he fought the beginning of the reform movement. He actually brought and, 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 and preserved, not brought, preserved Orthodox Jewry in Germany. Right. There was the Shantmar of Hirsch wrote a, a commentary, it's actually in German, because he basically took the language of the time, and he, very intellectual, very, philosoph- uh, very uh, philosophical, tremendous insights. You know, his, uh, he's got a safe called 19 Letters, everyone should read it, it's just basic tenets of faith, because he's fighting the new reform movement that Jews were being lost. And uh, he says an unbelievable insight He says like this, he says that the reason why the Trumas Adeshen is the beginning of everyday service, he says that a Jew should never lose sight of where he comes from. You always need to be connected to the past. Meaning it's not just starting a new service today. The ashes represent the leftover of yesterday's service. Before you can go into today's service, you have to have the remnants of yesterday's service. You can't move forward unless you're still holding on to, in some way, the direction of the past. He says, but on the other hand, he says, if you only live in the past, and there are people that just do that as well, that's very destructive. So when the ashes are getting too high, then we need to take Hotsasa Desh and you have to take them and throw them out outside the Machana. You have to get rid of them, dump them outside the Machana. He says that's the symbolism of it. And that's why I think that's why it would answer. It's not the service, it's not the end of the day service. It's not the end of the day. It's the beginning of the day. That's what he's saying. And that's uh, you know, I always say over that, you know, it's we can't just perseverate on who the grandfather was. And everyone looks at Yichas, Yichas, his grandfather was, you know, the more importantly is who the grandchildren are going to be. Can't lose sight of who the grandfather was, but it's not, that's not the primary focus. The primary focus is what are the grandchildren going to look like, not who the grandfather was. That's, uh, so he's saying that's the idea of the true Masadesh and you holding on to the avoda from yesterday before you for, for, propel forward. I want to say a, perhaps a different idea. And again, I don't believe that this in any way, uh, this, is not, this is not undermining what he's saying. I think it just supplements the idea of what the importance of the Truma Sadeshan. Um, When meeting with teachers and discussing some of the things that bother them in terms of what would they like to see instilled, so invariably they bring up something which I know it bothers me tremendously. And I, you know, you can always say, well, it starts in the home, it start, everything starts in the home. The question is what we do in school to focus on this and then maybe also get the message over to the home. One of the things that, that teachers are very bothered by is that you have lunch. You have lunch, Kanaanahar, we have a big school, we have to have like literally three or four shifts of lunch. Many of the students will not pick up the garbage, the trash afterwards, and throw it in the garbage. Just leave it on the table. Somebody else will clean it. 
One of the teachers here told me that uh, there was a kid sharpening her pencil in the classroom and the shavings were going right onto the floor. So the teacher went over and says, what do you do in your house when there's a mess? So the kid says, he says, Yolanda cleans it. He says, we don't have a Yolanda here. I'm not Yolanda. You've got to go and clean. You've got to clean the mess you made yourself. You know, Yolanda cleans it. He's talking to the, you know. But I think it, it's, it's a very, very important message. And I want to discuss on many different levels why. You know, obviously, I just, anytime this thing, anything involves destruction of property or not maintaining, you know, to me, it, it, it's, it cuts to the core of what I think bad migos are. I can deal with kids, mis- kids are kids, they can misbehave on many different levels, I, I, I can deal with it. When it comes to being destructive of property or not a, taking care of property, to me that really shows a, a, a certain element of, you know, that, that, that needs to be addressed. And, and, I, and I, today I want to discuss a little bit why we have to address it, how to address it, and the ramifications of it. You know, there's a, there's a, they say the famous story is, you know, the guy's visiting a school wants to know who the principal is. So he asks the kid, you know, who's the principal? He says, the one who picks up the garbage, you know, one in the hallway, that, that's the principal. You know, that's, you know, everyone has to be invested. Everyone has to take care. It has to be important to everybody. Um, but obviously it starts with role modeling. It starts with role modeling. One of the pre-first teachers told me that when they were teaching at a different school, they had a Shabbat Abba and a Shabbat Ima. By the parenthetically, I met with a family yesterday coming from another school where I just I couldn't believe what I was hearing. They don't want to impose gender roles on the kids. So they now not it's Shabbat Kochavim. We don't have a Shabbat Ava anymore and a Shabbat Ima. We have Shabbat Kochavim, Shabbat stars, because we don't want to impose gender roles on the... And they told me that now in that school, they don't refer to the teachers anybody, Mr. or Mrs. or Rabbi, by first names, because they feel that we don't need titles. We don't want to create, like, gender-oriented titles for that. I mean, it's like... What's going on here in California today is like just uh, out of control. Is I mean, it's, 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 not, it's, it's a more liberal school than we are, thank Jewish God. Not, but it's a Jewish, it's a Jewish school. And probably they want to do Shabbat Kochavim. But, uh, you know, it's... Uh, anyway, but... So the teacher was telling me, you know, she's explaining to the boy and the girl that you're going to be the Shabbat Abba and you're going to be Shabbat Ima. And... The boy asks, what, are, what am I going to do? What I have to do? He says, what your father does when he comes home, I want you to do. So the boy sits down on the chair, puts up his feet, goes, closes his eyes, and goes, you know, like, uh, that's good. what your father does. That's what you got to, you know, that's what you, you know. It's all role modeling. It's all, I, we have to, because our kids are going to do what we do. I mean, that's the, that's the, uh, so, I want to discuss one aspect, and I've spoken about this before. And it starts with the husbands, it starts with the fathers. My wife, I remember we used to, uh, my kids were in yeshiva in Miami. We were a lot of the out of town boys. They used to come already from a young age, from seventh, eighth grade, ninth grade. They left home, they came to yeshiva in Miami. So. We used to have a lot of the yeshiva boys over for Shabbos. And then I taught at the Hebrew Academy. It was more of a modern Orthodox school. But those were kids that were uh, coming from the community. And, and, and it used to bother my wife very much, you know, is that the yeshiva boys, and again, I'm not generalizing, but very often it happened, is that, you know, the meal is over. They don't get up and help take the things off the table, you know. The academy kids, 
So I was thinking maybe differences because unfortunately you know, the, the, there is a benefit of having a yeshiva that's not in the home and out of the city is that it, you can create a more conducive environment for spiritual growth. But on the other hand, when you have a kid already from seventh grade not growing up in the home, just basic standards of what a kid should be doing sometimes are lost, perhaps. I don't know if that was the reason. Whereas these other kids that were growing up in the houses, they knew to take off the table, you know, the thank you at the end of the meal. And my wife, which was always like telling me, you have to say thank you, you have to take the food, you know. You know but it does start in the home to a certain extent. And I, you know, Part of the reason why, and it's important, is that even a husband, I know there's different uh, cultures do things differently, but in part of the husband, a husband who gets up and helps take off the table or throws out the garbage, it's a way of showing appreciation for the process. I appreciated the fact that you made the meal, you cooked, you set the table, you put it up. The way he can show appreciation is by helping take off the table, by helping clean up, by helping throwing out the garbage. That's what shows that what you did for me is important. If you're not willing to do that, that means you're not expressing that what you had was important. Now again, there are cultural lines here. In some houses, you know, the husband is the melech and he sits there like you know, in the, the Megillah, you know, it's called ish for ish, you know, you know, but... I think especially in today's day and age, you know, you expect a lot of the wives, they're out there having to bring in the parnasah as well as with the husband, in the very least, showing appreciation what's going on at the Shabbos table or at the, any time. Throwing out the garbage is a way you show appreciation for the process that was done. Not doing that, not wanting to do that, shows me that I don't appreciate it. And it goes, and it therefore, and that's where it starts. The kid that is leaving garbage in, 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 in the classroom, he's not appreciating what is being done for him. And it goes even more because I have teachers that are upset that the teachers in the class before leave a mess. You know, if the teachers are leaving a mess, I came into a, a room of a Rebbe about seven years ago, and he does, he does Shabbos party. Very, I'm very excited. But there was kugel in the carpet, and there was, you know, like, what message are you giving if you don't care you know, yesterday one of my teachers came in. She said she got really upset at one of the rebellion. She got this brand, a brand new, uh, not brand new, it's, it's a new piano, pretty new piano, beautiful piano. And like someone had spilled soda and it's dripping off the top of it. And the Rebbe is there. And he's not telling him to come clean up. What's the message? It's not important to us if we don't step in and show the importance of it ourselves. And then we're not role modeling, role modeling it to the kid. Yeah, it shouldn't only be the parent picking up the garbage. I mean, but the parent pick up the garbage because they need the kid. We've talked about this very before. I mean, how important it is in every home to have chores. You set the table, you put it on, you throw out the garbage. Just having chores. It's got to do with affluence. You could be a billionaire. But if we don't train our children and ourselves, it means we're not appreciating the process. We don't appreciate what the process is if we're not willing to do those areas that we will delegate to somebody else because we don't consider it important enough. No, they are intrinsically important. Why are they intrinsically important? Because this is the way you show that you appreciate everything else that was done that goes associated with it. That shows the importance of it. So I was thinking to myself, is that could be, you know, why does the Truma Sadeshan even have to be an avoda? You're throwing out the trash. Put on a beggar, put on a... You know? That's the way the Kohen shows the importance of the whole avoda. The way you show that you appreciate the avoda that was done with this animal and with what is service is that you make the throwing out the trash an avoda as well. That's an avoda, and that's how you want to start off a day. You're starting with down the Hirsch, a beautiful idea. You're connecting the yesterday to today, but you're also showing how important this avoda is that I'm putting on the beged. I'm putting on the garment. It's like I'm getting dressed in a suit to throw out the garbage. That's the message.
And that's a message we said that our Shulchan is Dharma is Mizbeach. We bring that into our homes. Yes. There's nothing wrong with the father getting up and throwing out the garbage or cleaning off the table. It's interesting, in, my, in, in our own house, my father, I remember for many years, he used to be very mockbed with the crumbs on the table. He used to go around and clean off the crumbs. And the Talmud says, I found the source, the Talmud says, you know, and my grandfather was the same thing, is that if a person is mezalzal in the perurim, a person does, is, is, deprecates the little crumbs of bread, mm-hmm. so it's, it's a, it, it, it brings poverty. It brings poverty. But I, I, I'm thinking that there's this, the, the idea that that sense of, and this is what I, this is what I might take on it is as well, is that the Gemara says that there's another thing that brings poverty, the Gemara says in Bamatsiya. What it brings poverty is the tears of one's wife. The tears of a person's wife brings poverty. When it says that you have to be careful in how you treat your wife because her tears will bring poverty. And I'm thinking the idea of cleaning up after yourself that shows an appreciation for the wife that is the opposite effect. So this is a, I think the idea really that, that, that is here, nothing we're going to be learning in these parishes should be taken lightly. Truma Sedeshan a voter. They voted on who should do it. They ran to do it because it shows the importance of the entire voter is the way they deal with the trash. The way they deal with the trash, it shows how important they are in the voter. And that's, they put on the big, big day kahuna. You need big day kahuna to do the other one. Who take the trash? They, they actually, there was specific the Kohen. Kohen. The Kohen would do it. We don't know the Kohen. It was part of the avoda. The first avoda that everyone should have a Freilich and Purim. Anyone want to stop by my house at 2 o'clock? Anybody want to come by? The Balachan, let's make some good food. Enjoy. Please come by. You want to come by for a few minutes. Just sit as long as you want. We're there for the, for the whole afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.